In passing through the jungle on their way to a distant territory, Tarzan and Darno rescue Terence O'Rourke from the double attack of a lion and a leopard. The two friends accompany O'Rourke to a small camp in a forest clearing where they meet Major Burton Ashley, Jeanette Burton, and Dr. Wong Tai, who, with the Irishman, constitute all that remains of the Burton Ashley expedition. Upon learning that the four whites have been deserted by their native bearers and are lost, Tarzan agrees to lead them out of the jungle. The ape man fights and kills a gigantic, yellow skinned, half human creature in defense of the whites. In returning from a reconnoitering tour, Tarzan breaks camp and conceals the party high in the branches of a tree on a platform he has constructed for the purpose. As the little group gains the hidden refuge, they hear the distant thudding of drums. <laughs> What is it, Tarzan? Drums. War drums. I know, but who's beating them? What does it mean? Natives, Miss Burton. Probably a war party. Those drums don't seem to be coming any closer. No, not yet. Nevertheless, I have thought it wiser and safer for you to break camp and come here. This platform is wide enough for all of you to lie down and get some sleep while you can. And if those natives should come this way? You'll all be safe here. I suggest sleep because we'll have to travel fast and far and carefully before daylight. Then we'll do the best we can. Here, Jeanette, roll up in that blanket between Wong and me. Well, now, just to round out the day and make it perfect, either you or Dr. Wong should fall out of this cradle and land on a lion or something. Those limbs and branches will keep you from falling. Now, get what rest you can. Dono, you put the fire out and scattered the ashes? Me oui, mon ami. And you are sure nothing was left behind? Nothing. You must have had a good reason for your actions, Tarzan. What did you find? I left that yellow man's body for Dango, made a complete circle of the clearing, and when I came back to my starting point, the body was gone. Ah, Dango had already? No, he had not been near it. Or if he had, something drove him off. Mm, some other animal, of course. No, I examined the ground. I found two-toed footprints. Like the ones O'Rourke showed us this afternoon. A very dear. I couldn't help hearing any Tarzan. I want Lower to... Lower your voice. No use frightening, Miss Burton. Right, you are. And you say he found more of them clawfoot tracks? Yes. The ground where I dropped the body showed several pairs. Then those drums, mon vieux. You think I'm that... sure those drums are being pounded by the yellow men. Then why didn't they attack old camp? Numa the lion keeps them from a night attack. They'll figure on attacking at daylight. We'll be gone by then. If we... Why did we not leave at once instead of coming here? Because they'll send one or two single scouts who can take to the trees in case they meet Numa to locate and watch the camp or follow if we leave. I'm simply giving those scouts a chance to come and return with the report that we've disappeared. Which will bring the whole crowd here to pick up our trail, is that it? Exactly. But not until sunup. By that time, we'll be well on our way. I'm going back to the clearing now and watch. When the scouts have gone away, I'll be back, and then we'll leave. Now, sleep if you can, O'Rourke. Darno will watch. Be guarded, Lieutenant. There's a fella after me own heart. <laughs> but can we get away with it? <laughs> what do you think, Monsieur O'Rourke? Tarzan's powerful left hand grasps a trailing vine. A dizzy, sweeping arc and he vanishes in the dense blackness. From one lofty branch to another, through treetops that rock and sway at his swift passage, he makes his way back to the little clearing. In the dim distance, the throb of drums swells and fades on the vagrant night wind. Darno, with his rifle across his knees, leans back against the huge trunk of the photocarpus, listening to the stealthy footfalls of padded paws, mingling with the sharp snapping of twigs and the wild calls of savage life the ominous, death-filled voice of the jungle night. The Frenchman nods drowsily. Presently, a soft rustle of leaves, a slight jar as a dark shape drops from above and lands lightly on the platform beside him. Instantly, he's awake, his rifle ready. Darno. Ah, nom de... Ah, mon ami, I must have slept. Waken the others. We're leaving. Did they come to the clearing, the yellow men? Yes, only one. He went back to the village or camp to report. Ashley. Huh? What? Oh, uh, yes, Tarzan? Uh, O'Rourke, a doctor Wong. Yes, uh, Miss Burton. Yes, yes, Tarzan, I'm awake. Keep your voice low. 
Don't make any more noise than you have to. Get your things together quickly. I do not hear the drums. They stopped long ago. It'll be daybreak in a couple of hours. It must be a long way from here by then. Through this jungle? Why, it's as black as the inside of a tunnel. How are we going to... An elephant trail at the foot of this tree. We'll follow that. Are you ready? All ready. Mm -hmm. Come, Miss Burton. I'll carry you. Darnell, let the others go first, and you follow. Oui, je comprends. With the speed of a falling stone, Tarzan drops from limb to limb through the darkness to land with a soft thud on the jungle path. Oh, good gracious. That drop took my breath. I thought we were falling. By Jove, I say it's dangerous, this sliding down 50-foot vines. Don't talk. It is stated in the classics that all things which go up must eventually come down. The upward trip was far less difficult than the downward. Yes, and I didn't have many claws before. Now there's nothing left of me shirt but the sleeves. And Darnell? The lieutenant was right on me neck. Oh, he, here he comes. Oui, Tarzan? Here. Oh, it's so dark I can't see my hand in front of my face. How in the name of common sense are we going to keep together? Take hold of this rope, all of you. And don't let go. Darno, you last. I'll lead. Come on. That lion, Tarzan, he's, he's very close. Numa has fed, Miss Burton. He won't bother us if we leave him alone. Let us hope the all-seeing who guides our footsteps has cleared our path of jungle beasts. Thus, through mile after mile, Tarzan leads his charges from one dark jungle pathway into another. From the thick, black oppressiveness of the forest about them comes the deep, coughing roar of savage beasts. To at least four of the travelers, every tree and bush seems but the lurking place of some huge and horrible monster. Presently, a dense blue-gray mist creeps slowly through the tangle of underbrush, and little by little, nearby objects begin to stand out in dim, ghostly relief. The heavy mist becomes tenuous, begins to lift gradually, until, in a slight puff of wind, it twines itself like a silver silken scarf about vine, tree, and bush. The patterned roof of the forest becomes etched in the timid green of dawn. Then, abruptly, the red rays of the sun beat diagonally into the gray mist of the jungle. Beside the trunk of a giant baobab tree, on the bank of a swiftly flowing stream, Tarzan halts. We'll rest here. There's water. We'll not build a fire. Well, I hope I never go through such an experience again. I was never so frightened in all my life. Uh, Jove, it, it was rather nerve-wracking. May sick, zealous, and deep-throated monks curse those yellow fiends in all their ways unceasingly. I expected every moment to have them rush at me out of the darkness. Faith, and it wasn't them yellow devils I was worried about. I felt as if every lion in Africa was walking alongside of me, waiting for me to let go of that rope of Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we are out of the danger zone, Tarzan? As far as those yellow men are concerned? No. In that case, I suggest that we proceed at once. You're not tired? Oh, on the contrary. Then fill the canteens. Sure, and we'll do that. Come over here with them water bags. I'll fill them. Me too, nerveux. You are nervous, Tarzan? Why? These people are no. A wolf is the only one who knows the jungle. The others are used to traveling with a safari. We're going to have our hands full. <laughs> but we have had our hands full before this with others who knew less of the jungle. Once we reach Ahmed's village, we... And I we... suppose, Dr. Wong, that you and Uncle Jim are going to organize another expedition and begin your search for that old city all over again. <laughs> we have not discussed that phase of the situation. <laughs> That's the idea, Janet, exactly. I'm sorry to interrupt the discussion, but we must get underway. If you're all ready, we'll go. All right, all ready, Tarzan. Which way? Downstream on the riverbank. Come on. However, to get back to our future plan, that is exactly what we have in mind, Jeanette. What? A second expedition to find the city of Thor. You don't seem to understand what such a discovery would lead to, what it would mean to the world of science. The finding of a heap of old vine-covered stones in the middle of the African jungle. And that's a boon to science? No, Uncle Jim. I'm sorry, but I don't understand. Ah, but suppose, my child, it were not a heap of vine-covered stones. Suppose it still stands in all its ancient barbaric beauty, peopled by a living race of ancient men, eh? <laughs> oh. 
Well, very well. Have it your way, Dr. Wong. But seriously, we've had nothing but trouble since leaving Nairobi. And now you want to go... Quiet. Listen. Who is it, Tazda? Somebody coming this way? No. Camp just ahead. No more talk now. Walk softly. Come on. In cautious single file, the little company proceeds slowly along the riverbank, close to the jungle spring. In the lead, Tarzan moves forward with the alert noiselessness of Sheeta the leopard. The sound of strange guttural voices grows ever louder as the group nears a heavy tangle of underbrush that juts out over the river, obstructing their view of the bank beyond. Presently, the ape man lifts his hand in silent gesture for his friends to stop. Stealthily, without so much as the rustle of a single leaf, Tarzan moves a heavily matted branch aside and stares into a man-made clearing on the brink of the river. Jeanette, close behind him, looks cautiously over his shoulder. Good heavens! Look, Tarzan!